Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every weeknight. Well, not every weeknight. Every week. Wednesday night <laughs> Eastern. Yeah, because I was going to say. It's a, a lot, minute. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot when that happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm only yeah. on one night. Yeah. Something's wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't mean to talk to you about this. Uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta fix that. Um, yeah, no, this is Secrets of the Sire. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture, all the stuff you love to talk about. We love to talk about, and we love to talk about it with you. It's a very positive message this week, as opposed to the heated arguments of last week. Oh boy! So we're gonna have a Star Wars moratorium, even though we are gonna talk a little bit about Star Wars because some release dates were done. We're gonna talk uh, some other release dates, very interesting in the X universe. Uh, but we're also gonna welcome Newsarama's Chris Arant on the show. He is going to um, run down the summer movie madness. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Dolce. As always, joined by my co-host, Hassan Godwin. Hello, Lord of the Radio here. Oh, God, really? Good we're to still, be here. Are we still doing that? Yes. We're still doing we're that. Always, I, got, I signed on for a year. <laughs> wait, wait, with who? With the Lord of the Radio uh, uh, consortium. <laughs> There's a consortium? Yeah. So, I mean, I got to use the title. I'm actually obligated to do so. You're obligated to I'm do it. I'm obligated to, to, to be the Lord of the Radio. Okay. Well, that's that's fair. And yeah. that's, that's totally fair. It's costing fair. me 25, 25 cents a, a week. At, really? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it's not it? really a lot to be the Lord of the Radio. That's the cost of what our patrons would easily give. Right. If they were supporting our show. They, we, we could, if they were to provide ah, such money to, the, pa- that, to the Patreon page, we could declare them also Lords of the Radio. Well, that's fantastic. That's what we, we could like give to them see. titles. Uh, Jersey Jedi wonders, does that mean he gets a ring like Green Lantern? Do you, get a, or do you get a ring? If you could get yourself a ring, you'd have a ring like Green Lantern, and, and that would be commemorative. No, but he's saying, like, do you have to be Lord of the Radio to get the ring like Green Lantern? Um... My my advice would be to get the ring and then lie and tell people you have to be the Lord of the Radio to get this ring. That's a, that's a good move. Yeah. That's, that that that's works usually, for you as well. That's too. what I always do. All right. Lying is, is a big part of uh, what I do. Well, that's what we do every every yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> we do this every week at Wednesday, 8 p.m. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Eastern, we, we, we give you our inside opinion. <laughs> I'm going to give you the little air quotes. <laughs> Yeah, we're well, inside. we are. We are technically it's inside, and I got to be honest, it is warm as yeah, heck in here. It's it's warm is, as heck. It has been a gloomy, gloomy. Uh, that's last what was wrong days. last week, man. The tensions were high <laughs> because it was like a sauna. Well, that's because we had Bitcoin folks calling us <laughs> last week. That's that's you know that's what it comes our down brains to. were baking. All right, uh, I want to give a shout out to our beloved patrons who we did mention before, though uh, they are supporting us, and we do really love it. We got some big things with the Patreon page coming in the next couple weeks too. Uh, we're gonna do a whole follow campaign. We're gonna have some really cool uh, videos. We're intern list tonight. Which is a yes. little sad, Patrick the intern. Yes, Patrick is. That's the downside to free labor. Eventually, they right. they realize that they're not right. getting paid, and they're like, "Hey." Or when they they shut off the internet and they mysteriously <laughs> disappear. We have new in, we have new internet too, which is which is really good. So, yes, you know, it's, we had it, some seriously strong internet. So yeah, right it's, it's all really and, good. And strangely enough, Patrick is not here. Hmm. Mm, coincidence, Something I think is, not. Uh, yeah, I, think I never not. think about coincidences. Secrets of the Sire is brought to you by all of our beloved patrons. We have dedicated fans, Omar Morales, Einar Peterson, Matt Byer, John Hoff III, Ashley Haikai, our <laughs> program director, Stephanie Dolce, our executive producer, Steve Ovecki, and Brian Phillips, who was on our green room chat earlier. And as always, our Uber fan, Christina Dolce. If you want your name shouted on the interwebs, go to michaeldolce.com. Check out our Patreon page, secretsofthesire.com slash, oh no, p- patreon.com slash secrets of the sire. It's that kind of night. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna rank um, the like the movies we want to see. We're gonna pick one. We got a whole list of comic book movies. Summer movie season's kicking off. Yes, it is. It's really exciting. It's well, yeah. It's way better than last year. If right? you're Can an we- optimist, if you're like into having fun and like laughing and stuff like that, <laughs> unlike we me, are not. I'm not. Yeah. No. So I mean, but normal people are that thrilled. sounds terrible. Yeah, I know. It, it sounds like a, it sounds like a torture. Don't see like the other guys. D- no, no. Because all you do is laugh and slap people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> According to uh, what I've heard. Yeah. No. So, so we were. At, you know, I'll, I'll spill the beans too because my wife is putting our son to sleep, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you know. So we <laughs> we were talking in the green room. Um, one of the funniest underrated movies is The Other Guys. Yeah. With with Will Ferrell and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Really, really funny movie. And I remember this girl. This was years ago. Unfortunately, it was years ago. It was years ago, and she was like, you know. I mentioned something to her. I'm like, did you ever see the other guys? Like, how great a movie is that? She's like, yeah. <laughs> we saw it together. <laughs> and then I actually had flashbacks to 
violently whipping my arms around with laughter because it was so funny. And I think I literally the crap out of her. beat the crap out of yeah, her. Yeah, that's not in, good. In a, in a non... Yeah, um, in a non... Uh, in a non-NFL uh, <laughs> player, yeah. you know, caught on video in an elevator. <laughs> in a non ricey kind of way. <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that goes to show. Yeah, don't... Don't don't see the other guys, or don't beat your partner. <laughs> you know, one of those two. Yeah, d- depending on your point of view, that's what you. Take well, from luckily that story. you can't that's the moral see of that story. you can't see the other guys ever again in theaters and have the same. You know, because it's already been out, so it's you know. I think I don't think I don't unless know. there's a, a unless there's like a Will uh, Ferrell marathon. You're rich, you could rent out a theater, watch the other guys, and slap the crap out of whoever you brought with you. <laughs> if I ever needed an incentive to get rich, <laughs> now I have. There you one. go. On now our way to I Money Island one. at last. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> All right, but before we talk about the uh, the summer movies coming out, we actually have... We're going to talk about 2018 already because there's some exciting news that came out there. Deadpool 2 gets a release date. Um, 20th Century Fox also schedules a pair of new X-Men films for next year. So this Why? We already know news. how it all ends. <laughs> well, you know, uh, l- let's, let's start with one and the other, right? Deadpool 2, to me is going to be under the same fire that Guardians 2 is going to be under. Okay? There's no sneaking up on us anymore. There's no, what's going on with this? Is this going to be good? Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of this heaping is, that's pressure. What, that's what's bull about today. Today, is, this, is, this is a terrible time. Because <laughs> it's a terrible time. It really It's just a terrible time. Because in the old days, you just wanted to see more of it. You know, it was like, I liked this. I want to see more. I just want to see the continuation. I want to see what happens after. Now it's like, well, it's going to be as good. Is it going to live up to well, the hype? And man, nobody, to be fair, everybody in those, thinks they're a critic. In those, well, everyone goes on Yelp. Everyone is a critic. Yeah, and you uh, know what? No, not everyone is a critic. Not everyone is qualified to critique. But, to, you know, it's, it's funny you make a, break, a very, blah, blah, blah. You make a good point, though. Of course I do. But in the, <laughs> if you think about it, in the 80s, sequels were notoriously god-awful. Like, really well, god off. Like Men in Black Two got awful. Like you know, there's not a lot that was that got awful. <laughs> um, but but Superman sequels, Three or Superman Four but got didn't awful. Take them so, why are you why are you bringing up Superman Four? Ghostbusters Two Stop. got what awful. You, I'm trying to make a point. What are you doing? I'm just saying that the, that no sequel, with you're, the exception of like The Godfather, you're over explaining. Everyone's yeah. on board with you now. There's no there's no defense now. Hell yeah. There's no defense. I'm gearing up from last week. There is a <laughs> armoring up. <laughs> There's no um, suit up. Nobody took things as seriously back then, though. The the pre everybody was surprised no, no, no. that the the movie was a hit. No one had a to forum to take things as seriously. Back and then. that's why they didn't take anything seriously. There was probably some heated we dinner table not, arguments. Yeah, but the, who the heck cares about what's a couple of tin cans? Huh? There was a rotary phone being dialed. <laughs> Did you see Superman three? So are you saying it's better, or Richard worse? Pryor? Are what you saying you it's better? Skip past that, then. Are you saying it's better or worse? You're saying was back then better or worse I was than trying now? to, but you won't let me say that. So are you saying it's better or worse? That's on let, you. Let me hear your point. No, 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 no. We're be. done. I'm, I'm curious. I'm done trying I'm to explain myself, sir. I'm curious. I'm done. I'm now, about to now, pack my stuff and go home. intrigued me. I'm going to go. You other guys I'm just saying nobody me. cared. Right. Nobody. It, it, they were people were everyone was surprised that everything was a hit back then. Right. Ghostbusters was a big hit. There was three channels. They didn't have, well, they didn't have... A, a you know a cinematic universe planned and ten sequels in the works. They just put out Ghostbusters. It was a giant hit. Yeah, they were like, we're gonna make another one. Right, and that was that's pretty much but why the next one was in between Ghostbusters that great. one and Ghostbusters two, uh, there wasn't like endless clickbait articles about the new movie and you know revealing every that's what I'm little saying. bit. So are you saying it's it, it was better? Or I'm worse. saying it's no different. It, we just have we just have more technology now. It is different because the people making those movies weren't paying attention That's to those true. That clickbait stuff. That's like very that. true. They were just making films. That's right? true. And they were listening to their they were listening to whoever they could hear and they were listening to the contributors who were paying for the films they, in the first place. That's mainly who they were listening to. Right. So it actually might in a way be And better. those contributors are probably listening to their family or whatever, so they sure. whatever positive. Their thirteen year old daughter who has like a poster of like you know, somebody. Right. So that's why some of these things were hit or miss because right. you couldn't give the fans what you want, what they wanted, because they didn't know what the fans wanted. Right. Or they didn't give a damn about what the fans right. wanted. But as we're saying, things were a little better. Then. You've compelled me. I, you, you've turned me around. I think Force Awakens was a great movie. Uh, so. <laughs> Which, of course, was my point, <laughs> is that you would be so feverishly delusional as That's to say right. something that terrible. That's right. That. Um, 
so that's the one thing about Deadpool too. It's got it's it, it's up against it's up against a lot now. It's up against the the pressure to to repeat what what it did. It's up against but it shouldn't be. And but Guardians two is up against the same pressure too. Uh, don't tell me you're not going to walk into the theater. I'm going to walk into the theater with Guardians two and not remember the first movie and not remember the joy I felt, uh, the the surprise of being introduced to a different world, a different corner. And don't forget Guardians of the Galaxy two. Is almost like a fresh movie altogether because I mean it was based on a very very limited mini series that came out. It's not even the Guardians of the Galaxy that I grew up reading, mm-hmm. which was like the Jim Valentino run back in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. It has some aspects to it, the Vance Astro and and mm-hmm. and um, uh, who's who's the character, uh, the blue guy. I forget, you know, because again thoughts. Yondo. Escape. Yondo. Yeah. I mean, it has that aspect to it so there is some reminiscence but no they 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 pegged like the mark millar miniseries uh that came out or the paul jenkins man i forget it was you know right. they're interchangeable right. uh and you know <laughs> and, and I use that love so, to hear that so uh, <laughs> we loved having paul jenkins on the show by the way and we welcome him back anytime um you know so it, it didn't have any expectation going in. it was almost basically i mean it, it was a marvel movie in the sense that it's technically connected mm-hmm. but it's not really yeah, a Thanos. Marvel. Right, it connected but, it to at right. least the Avengers because right. of Thanos being. But it, in, but you, it, know. you could take away Thanos, yeah. and it could just be an entire. It could just be a new space adventure, you know, True. that has nothing to do with the Marvel universe. Yeah, and well, now it doesn't have that. Doesn't have that element of surprise. Yeah, but you are doing that to yourself because I'm going to go in there and say, look, as long as there's some some really good jokes, you know, and there's a little more development of the characters, and there's some more good '70s music. Because I'm from the 70s, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I think we, I, yeah. Yeah. I think both of us. Then I'm going to be fine with it. I got three months of 70s in me. Three months. Yeah. Child. Changes everything. <laughs> you, child. Changes everything. It changes nothing. Uh, <laughs> um, but but you're going, I mean, what are you expecting? What are, what are your expectations? What are your desires? What do you want to see? What would you de- What would you see I want to make see... you decide that it's not a good movie? I, no, okay, now I'm actually going to go the opposite way. I'm going to say, what do I need to see to make it a good movie? Ah, that's easy. No, what it's not. You, it's not easy though. It's not easy. Make, but but deciding what would make it bad is a little more in depth. Mm, I think it's easier to make a bad movie than it is to make a good movie. I really do, and and especially built off. Of course, off of, there is. But and, what would make it bad for you? It would make it bad for me in the sense that we walk in. Um, there's a lot of forced jokes. There's a lot of forced humor. Um, like, like, and I'll give you an example too. In the trailer that we that we saw, the initial trailer, you know, the whole scene with Dave Bautista yelling at at um, at what's his face. Uh, you know, again, it's just that kind of a night tonight. Um, <laughs> Star you know, Lord, right? Or, Chris Pratt's character, yeah. and 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 being like ha 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 ha, and I'm like. And, and, the joke might be funny in the context of the movie, but in the context of a trailer, it's like, ha, see? We're hilarious still. Yeah, well, We're really funny. Uh, that, may, that may be, and I speculate, in favor of them. But that just mm-hmm. may be them going through the motions of what they are going to have to do in yeah. order to, uh, you know, selling these small aspects of it so that they could they could. But they're, they're basically along. reminding us of the first movie, and that's I think that's the downfall of what well, a sequel what can the, do. That's what, that's what the trailer has to do. The trailer has to kind of get you, oh, this is going to be the same thing. Because if they start off with uh, Kurt Russell and all this other stuff, and it's going to be about his dad, it's going to be an in-depth look at the, you know, people yeah. are going to be like, oh, they're going to they're going to prequels it, you know, they're going to yeah. start getting us involved with all the, the political machinations mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And we don't want to see that. We want to see more of the same. We yeah. want to see, we want to hear the music and we see the explosions and see outer space and see goofiness. But I see, and that's what I'm, that's what it comes down to with the question of what, not what makes it a bad movie. What will make it a good movie? A well, good what movie to a good me. Movie in the, in the one, in the less than one minute we have left. What when, will make it a good movie? When we come back. No, tell me now. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And And welcome welcome to to 21st Century Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. For you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business. And your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. J. 
joined by my uh, esteemed colleague and co-host, Lord of the Radio. Lord of the Radio. Lord yes. of the Radio. Thank yeah. you very much. Do you have to apply? Do you have to like go to college for that? Is there some sort of like classes? I could tell you how to become Lord of the Radio, but then you'd become Lord of the Radio, and I wouldn't be Lord of the Radio <laughs> this is anymore. Very true. No such thing as co-lord. <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It's a <laughs> Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. Call in. We'd love to hear your voice as well, 877-480-4120. It, that kind of depends on the voice, actually. This is very true. In reality. This is very true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, we lo- we love we love all of our callers. If Gilbert we, Godfrey very... called, we I don't know if we'd love to hear his voice. <laughs> I'd be just pretty impressed that Gilbert <laughs> yeah, Godfrey that would, called. I mean, like, no, hey, no, the caliber some, of caller pull, is a completely you pull some different story. I, you you know, some I, could, I could probably make that happen. All right, well, that's that's yeah. exciting. Well, I, I promise to remember people's names in the second segment. I've psyched <laughs> myself up. You know, this is what happens when you have a kid and you wake up at five thirty in the morning. It's just oh, it is what it is. Excuses, excuses. I got to come up with something. Yeah, I got to go. I get the kid is actually the ultimate. excuse. We just got to come up with better ones. No, 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 no. The kid is like the ultimate excuse. Like, you can do whatever you want now. No. It was your choice to have the kid. Well, well, (laughs) it's a matter of of, Uh of speaking. That's a whole different show. Um, Yeah. (laughs) But here's the thing, though. Mm. Like, having a baby, Mm -hmm. so we know you don't want to get married, you don't want to have kids. We we established that in the green room. What is the green room? Go to our Patreon page. You can sign up for a green room. Well done. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Shameless plug. Yeah. but, you know, having the kid allows you to pretty much do whatever you want. Like, really? you can show up to people's houses, kick the table over, spill all the drinks, chug a beer, and they'll be like, I got to get home. I've got the kid. <laughs> and they'll be like, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I got to understand. Only if they have kids. It, well, yes. Yeah. Very true. Very you can true. get away with anything you want with other parents. Yes. Especially other parents of newly, newly yes. borns, right? So, yeah. But actually, yeah. no. Any parent, any parent, because even parent? even like thirty years later, they'll be like, "Oh, I remember those days." Well, maybe, maybe. I remember. They, they I was throwing furniture out the window. They might have thrown calluses over those it. wounds by by then. No, but there's there's you like, can't get away with that with your 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 unparented friends. Have you ever so. had like a Comic Con experience where it's just like one of those things where you, where you kind of like band together as brothers? Uh, yeah. After the show is no, over, I can see that. Okay. And then like you could come back like years later and be like. Well, that's true. Oh, near it's com- a Vietnam near Comic-Con game. 2012. War stories. I was War there. Stories. I got you. I know. I, I know you. what you're feeling. Uh, Christina Gillen. I hope I pronounced her. Is it Gillian or Gillen? It's Gillen. Gillen. Hey, look at me go. See? <laughs> one for one. One for one. Segment you're two. You're doing it. You're doing it. Doing good. I want to welcome Eric Gargantil, Simon McCaffrey on the, uh, on the live cast as well on Facebook. So Christina says the only way it will be bad... Uh, we're talking about Guardians 2 and the pressure of having a mm. sequel versus mm. not having a sequel. The only way it will be bad is if it's the same movie, different bad guy. And Force I, Awakens. And Ta-ding. I agree 100%. Well, <laughs> no, but that's not, that's not a direct sequel. See, that's, that's, we're going to have a different argument <laughs> on that. It's a sequel, and it was a retread. That um, fits the criteria. Uh, but a direct sequel. Criteria. You don't understand. Oh, no, no, direct man, sequel. You're, you're it's a direct, moving no, the no. goalpost. Direct sequel. Oh, fine. Direct sequel. Fine. I, I, think there's a, I think there's a huge difference between the follow-up to one of the biggest surprise smash hits of 2014 versus but you know coming back 30 years later I mean, down the like, road. See, that's the thing. Is that here we are like talking about it's probably it's it's under pressure because it might not be as good as the first one or whatever, and we're not excited to see what happens. Happens next, and that's what's wrong with us. No, but I'm am excited to see what happens next. But I'm but that's my not fear taking is, precedence. My fear is they're not going to show you what's happening next. They're going to remember that's a different story. That's what we're talking about. But here. that's not what you said. That's you said is it going to be? Is it is it doomed out the gate? I don't know who said gonna... we had good chemistry because we're just firing. No, I, I never said that. I'm surprised to be here every week. As a matter of fact, <laughs> but anyway, been, been meaning to talk to you about that <laughs> yeah, too. Actually, well, I got a contract. <laughs> Ironclad. Been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> you got to buy me out so <laughs> i mean we have we have that um you know worry and we're gonna we're gonna go even more into detail with our guest in the next segment right. uh, chris around from newsarama because we're gonna we're gonna count down we have there's a ton of movies coming out we didn't even get to the no. fact that new mutants was released too but we'll get to that later in the show too so the, the release date for the release new date mutants. that they're actually making a new mutant show mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna a make a tv ha- show 
Is it no no? I'm uh, sorry, movie. It's a movie. movie. It okay, movie. okay. Um, uh, and and I'm possibly Malay, uh, Malays Williams from uh, Game of Thrones is going to be Wolf Spain, which is a, which is a really good casting decision if they really? do go that way. Yeah, I think it's Maisie, not Malays. Ah, whatever. Malays is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how We're, I feel. Now I know how you you're feel suffering about, a Malays yeah, right now. now you know, so. <laughs> well, one for one for two. What are you going to do? <laughs> I was in a I was in the ballpark. Though. Yeah, you were. You hey, were. I knew who you were talking about. Hey, if um, so, it's a win. If I can, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a win. It's a win. What is it? If a batter gets three out of ten, he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Right? Sports talk. That's I don't know what the, you're talking about. That's the biggest thing. This is not a baseball game. Uh, we'll run down the summer movies with Chris when he when he joins us next segment yeah, too, okay. because we've got a whole lot we can we can rank. But um, like just kind of kind of juxtaposing onto what we uh, originally were talking about. So they are going to be doing a new mutants movie, and I think that's a very fascinating thing. And I think the biggest drop of the ball that they're going to make is it's not a continu- It's a continuation of First Class, and it's not a continuation of Logan. What do you think? <sighs> You, you you're looking for trouble. <laughs> just just asking me about that. You're looking for they have destroyed this brand. Like Yo, Fox has destroyed. Well, the, they've also the, reinvented the it numerous times. They reinvented it and destroyed it again. And right, exactly, you know. And I mean, almost Every third they movie. destroyed it the next movie. Yes, after the reinvention. Uh, but now they're back. Actually, they're two for two. They're just no, back. They're not. They're, they're, they're just. They're three. not back. They're two back with popularity. They're popular, right. and right. They, and it's and and now the the world thinks that they can make a good movie again. That they they they've reinvigorated their brand. Right. The story, however, is dead. It's been dead so many times that you, it's as dead as the actual Marvel comics. That's and how many times they murdered the the X Men franchise. So which they're also now about um, to do again. Well, no, they're actually trying to dig deep and bring back the core classic. Yeah, characters again. yeah, we'll see, and that and that again will be another uh, uh, cog in the in the machine that's actually killing it. Yeah, because. It's it, there's no integrity to it because every time they run into a wall, they could just start it over again. So wh- what do we care? You know, I, everyone I, says that they want to see stuff, the stuff that they grew up with, and nostalgia stuff. The problem with that is that those people who want nostalgia are the loudest people. Sure, and they're the old, usually the oldest ones, so they have more access to being loud mm-hmm. than, than younger people who are reading it uh, or whatever. When you cater to those people, you're actually catering to a small percentage of your fan base. But how much more uh, nostalgia can we get? I mean, I don't exactly know anybody back there being like, whoa, nothing was better than when I was smoking a joint and reading New Mutants, you know? I mean, it's not like, yeah. it's not like that, was, uh, that was the penultimate. You know, we've seen... No. Like, I, although I was a, I was a big uh, New Mutants I thought fan. you were about to say you are a big pot smoker. <laughs> In which case, talkradio.nyc also has, yeah. uh, again... What is, oh, what? In the No 420. In the No 420. Oh, see, so you got that one wrong, too. That's good. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that's bad now. <laughs> I just said In the No 420. Well, I know. Nice. But it was very, very meekish. How did meekish. I get it wrong? It was very meekish. Oh. It was, it was not with, with no authority. I'm very meek. I disagree completely. That's I a, know. That's a, that's a complete contradiction. I got, a, I got you all fooled. I'm taking your Lord of the Radio <laughs> certificate away now. No, you're not. That's it. That's you got to give you 25 cents. That's how you lose it. I want my 25 cents. In that's day. how you lose it. But I used to read New Mutants a lot, so that'll be... That'll be kind of a substantial thing. They're gonna have to work on on getting that right. But I'm, I'm not nostalgic for it. You know, it was a good read. I'm nostalgic for the time. So when you're I negating was your it. entire argument, then, huh? You're negating your entire argument. I'm not. In, I'm not a nostalgia fiend. Yeah. I'm saying they're, they're, to cater to me would be a mistake sure. because I remember it and I, I'm fond of it, but mm-hmm. I don't necessarily want to see it exactly the way. I it think was. you're overcome with malaise. <laughs> no, no. It's Malaise, Malaise, my friend. Malaise. Like Glaze. Like a wonderful. I Glaze. think her name is Malaise. Actually. It's not Malaise. <laughs> There's no L in it. It can't be Malaise. I really think. I really. I mean, if you saw Arya Stark in the last season, <laughs> there was no Malaise in Arya last season. You know, she was. She was. Uh, she was doing people in quite regularly. All right, you bef- don't do that when you're Malaise. Before we hit the summer movie madness, uh, one thing of note to talk about the Fox movies. Uh, the studio has earmarked three dates, January 12th, 2018, November 2nd, 2018, and February 14th, 2019 for unnamed projects. What do you think? For, 30, for Fox? 30 seconds. What X-Men project could they possibly stick into one of those dates? Uh, we know the other two, right? So, f- Cable. You think, oh, that's a cool... Man, that's... You're, you you just got your Lord of the Radio certificate back. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! It was never in danger. Holy crap. Yeah. All right, when we come back, we're going to run down the summer movies with Chris Arant from Newsarama, and he's going to give us his take whether we're going to pop the corn or toss it in the bargain bin DVD. <laughs> bin. 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 You're ten, listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> If 
you have an interest in marijuana, you want to know about marijuana, law, policy, and culture, then feel free to join me, Joseph A. Bondi, every Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning on my show, In the Know 420 on TalkingAlternative.com. Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Now in theaters, Beauty and the Beast is out, and there's big, big controversy with two because of the supposed gay relationship that, that yes. takes place. You know, and I thought the, the real controversy would be about the bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> Bestiality is not a problem. Oh, yeah, It's just yeah, yeah. homosexuality. We don't like that. <laughs> Having sex with a giant beast, that's, that's all right. <laughs> Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture, all the fun stuff every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. If you love what we do, uh, check us out on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Go to iTunes, Secrets of the Sire, S-I-R-E. You can go onto iHeartRadio. You can go on Stitcher and Spreaker and SoundCloud. Just dial it in. We're everywhere. Yeah, we, we really are everywhere. We are everywhere. It's really sickening. Yeah. want to thank uh, Christina <laughs> Gillen. Just pledged $5 to the Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Thank we thank cool. you. She's in, on the, she's in now. She's, yeah, she's, she's going to get green room access yeah, next week. Yeah, so now week. i got to really watch So money. Hassan's like, <laughs> really, like, that just, like, beads of sweat <laughs> trickling down on his forehead now. Now he's got to watch what he says. Yeah. But he's not going to because I won't tell him when we're actually recording. Nice, nice. That's like, you did, like you did before. That's the secret. All right, yeah. I want to welcome our guest, uh, Mr. Chris Arant from Newsarama. Chris, you there? Yes, I am, guys. Uh, I thank you for having me. Well, we uh, we love having you on. A um, lot, of, lot of talk. First, let's talk uh, Deadpool 2 and Guardians 2 before we get into our list of summer movies coming out and we're going to rank them. Um, do you think there's an inherent pressure? Do you, are you feeling, is there a lot of like commenting going on on Newsarama's site where people are concerned about these movies or are they generally just full of optimism and, and positivity? Well, I, I think uh, both are in a very different state than they were for the original movies. Like I remember covering, um, especially Guardians of the Galaxy, when it was coming out, it had very low expectations. Not that uh, people thought there was a it would be a negative or a bad movie, but that but that was one of the first times that those uh, on the article started floating uh, like about is this going to be uh, Marvel's first bad movie and how it translated into something totally different. So now. In 20, uh, 2017 and 2018, they have a very different prospect. And um, generally, the, the buzz has been pretty positive. I think uh, uh, particularly James Gunn has been uh, doing good about basically directly communicating with fans and mm-hmm. having this kind of um, transparency and kind of over-delivering, especially with like the, uh, the, um, the reveal of five um, post-credit scenes to kind of give more than what's expected in the movie and from like the early reviews it seems to be uh, generally uh, positive yeah, there you go I've read mixed reviews actually I read like oh. you know not as enchanting as the first I've, I, you know like, there's there's people that are out there you know kind of say I, I think um what you just said, though, reminds me of like Deadpool when he was uh, when Ryan Reynolds was actually out communicating with fans at conventions, and it seemed like they were really in tune with what the fans were saying. I, I thought that was going to be a, a negative to the film, though. I thought that they were going to cater too much to the fans when it came to Deadpool, but obviously, I was proven um, kind of kind of wrong on that one. Um. 
I think it's possible. Like, but I, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, more uh, basically fan reviews as they come out overseas since the movie's out in uh, various uh, ter- uh, territories to see that out. I've talked talking with my colleagues um, that are that are able to kind of distance it from the first movie and not just trying to be just like the first movie because as we know that can be a very uh negative comparison to make the try to, to try to make a movie too much like what came before like sure. what you guys saying about uh the previous star wars movies and force awakens trying to be different from those previous ones but also be similar enough um so um, from what i've seen in terms of the movie unless i, unless I think it's going to be a good movie just not guardians of the galaxy Two more hours right. would be a, a different movie, but it, it, like, it, like it seems like uh, James Gunn, since this is the first time he's uh, writing the script from scratch, like a, he seems to have a firm grasp on it. That's a that's a good point. So, Guardians of the Galaxy obviously is the kicker to the summer movie madness. Can we agree the top three movies? And and correct me if if I'm wrong or throw your hat in the ring. We got Guardians of the Galaxy, Wonder Woman, Spider Man. Like, are those the top three? Are uh, those the most anticipated summer movies? Or, or um, it, globe? Like Hassan's looking at me funny because he he really is excited for, for Valerian to come out. But I'm just saying, like, is there, <laughs> that's is, not why I was looking at you like that. I always look at you. Like well, that. but I, I uh. said an extra eye twinge <laughs> and, a, and an extra like. Well, I think know. I just think you know. There's we're we're forgetting. There's some there's some powerhouses there. You know, like you think the, Alien the, Covenant, Aliens, uh, also uh, Pirates. Pirates was a big franchise. Yeah, they're hoping they're, they're going to try to rekindle it. I yeah. understand that, but it was a big franchise. It was pretty powerful. But I think in the comic book, like let's say that like stri- like strictly based off a comic book, the top three, right? Guardians, Wonder Woman, and, and Spider Man: Homecoming. Yeah, oh, uh, definitely. But, um, there's um, there's only basically those and Valerian. Then if you count uh, Atomic Bond and in um, August, uh, like I don't know if you consider that summer. Dark Tower. Oh, you know, no, August is summer. We're going to go all the way to Kingsman. Dark Tower is not September twenty sixth. Book though. No, but it was at one point. So there is. They made a comic book. Right. Of the I'm movie just saying there is, it. there is. There okay, is. You know, fair. we're trying to pull it all into this. I, I, into this I, I see where you're going. Out of those uh, top three, they did we that mentioned with aliens though, also though. So mm, out of the top three we mentioned though, which one do you think fans are like just dying to see? Like really, really. What's get? What's what's. What's moving the needle at Newsarama in terms of hits on the website? Are people reading about Guardians? Are people reading about Wonder Woman? Are people reading about Spider Man? You know, out of the out of the summer movies, which one is is, is you know pushing the needle the most? Um, it seems like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy like uh, is the one pushing it most, but I think that's the one where the marketing campaign is kind of in the high gear uh, right yeah. now because they're selling the movie overseas and now. So there's so many mm-hmm. articles and promotions about it. I just did stories today on a Dairy Queen partnership and a Doritos <laughs> partnership. Oh, and when you get into the junk great. food, we're in. We're <laughs> I feel um, like Chris Pratt is a Derek Jeter of movies right now. Just, <laughs> just, just anything he's doing is just like I'm going to make money. Boom. Yeah. Cha-ching. <laughs> Cha-ching. Uh, what what can you tell us about Wonder Woman? What are you guys hearing about that? Um, we're hearing uh, very good things about it. Like since it was um, completed so far in advance from basically the release date, like I've, like I've heard, there hasn't been much uh, tinkering with it beyond just the normal uh, reshoots that were done um, earlier in the year. So things are pretty positive. Like there's some uh, rumors of some early screenings, yep. but those haven't been uh, substantiated. But I, well, but I imagine someone's seen like early cuts of the movie at this point. Okay, so wow, well, all right, we're we're rooting because yeah, we we're rooting for Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, and I think uh, uh, Gal is. I think she's she oh, surprised she's me. She's magnificent in the role. as Wonder yeah. Woman. I think she's she's she represents such a fierceness and just a like a like a natural confidence right. to that role. I think she does a great job. I just think I didn't think she had the the, the look right com- yeah. from uh, from the Fast and the Furious movies until I saw her in Batman versus Superman. And I was yeah. like, no, no, I'm absolutely wrong. She she's she'll work. It'll work. It works. Is Spider-Man Homecoming going to be the birth or death of the Spider-Man franchise? Because i, I got to be honest with you, as much as I'm kind of getting excited for it, and I loved uh, I loved Holland in uh, Civil War, this is like the seventh Spider-Man movie in, in, yeah. you know, in a span of, like, I feel like three years. <laughs> right? I mean, it, yeah. it, it feels it like feels a lot, It feels like three right? years. <laughs> um, I, 
I, I think they've really kind of that's something that Marvel debated internally to kind of come up and came up with this new direction where it's more focused on high school and like early things was like a uh, like a John Hughes type superhero movie. So like I really think it's going to hit in uh, different, uh, basically a very much a younger uh, demographic than the previous, like the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew uh, Garfield movies. So like I think it has a, a lot of potential, but. But I do think that fans that have seen all the previous Spider-Man movies may mm-hmm. just be having Spider-Man overload because there's like it's not like they've been waiting all this time to see Spider-Man on the big screen. So it's it's a it's a very different prospect than someone going to see like the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie to basically going to see this. There's a lot for it to live up to, and there's a lot for it to kind of uh, try to avoid and uh, having connecting themselves a little. And having to forget the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies as well, too. I mean, it's not easy to, to forget hours wasted in a movie theater you know like that so it, it could be very 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 trying all right well, i'm going to go through a list you're going to tell me your early predictions and then we're going to hold you to them and call you back up when you're proven wrong no i'm kidding um <laughs> i'll call him I'll call <laughs> hey i was the one that went on record for three episodes straight saying yeah. deadpool was going to flop so you know go figure you know um you're gonna you're gonna tell me pop the corn or toss into the bargain bin, okay? You're gonna you're gonna give me the predictions. Guardians of the Galaxy, pop the corn or toss into the bargain bin. Pop the corn. All Definitely. right. Yes. That's a that's a definitive pop yes. the corn. All right. All right. All right. Good one. Wonder Woman. Pop the corn. Definitely. All right. Well done. Oh, uh, we heard some we heard some things <laughs> though. We heard some things from our but who do we hear it from? Yeah. Well, I know we're, we are actually <laughs> we're not a legit news website. Though. No. No, so, we what? just, but but our our news person is a time traveler, and this is uh, very and, true, and therefore we true. he must be believed. Transformers: The Last Night. Um, I can't sign on for that one, guys. <laughs> but that one. Say it. Yes. Say it. <laughs> bargain bin. Bargain bin. All right, yes. go to the bargain bin. Uh, Spider Man: Homecoming. Pop the corn. Pop oh, the corn. He, All he, right. he went hesitate. right for it. No, you didn't even no, hesitate. He didn't hesitate. Well, he's a, he's a, you know he's a proponent for it. He said it was going to have a John Hughesy kind of thing, and it was going to be all different. So he's he's who we're getting go, that information go, from. Uh, go back and see the director's previous movies, and you'll get a lot more. Um, uh, Excited about this? Like, we can uh, go back and watch what he's done before. Like, I think he'll get some more confidence in it. All right, I like that. Right, I like cool. that right off the bat. I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so I want I want to enjoy this movie. I want to want to see this movie. All right, um, Sam Leibowitz, our producer, comes from an uh, anime and manga background. July 14th is a limited release of Full Metal Alchemist. Which is very exciting. Yeah. Do we know anything about that? Can we pop the corn or bargain bin that? Or yeah, just take a, take a stab. What do you think? Um, the, the trailers look really good. Oh, see, this guy knows everything. That's why we have these educated guys on, yeah. and as opposed to us. That, <laughs> Who, we that, don't I know. We remember, don't know like, what the hell I'm like, Chris going Pratt, on. what does he do? Yeah, that guy. Um, I went to Pratt school. July 21st. There. Valerian. Oh, Hassan's on pins and needles. Pop the corn or bargain bin? <sighs> You can, you can you can say bargain bin. We're not going to hang up on you because <laughs> I'm so. And that was our guest, Chris Arons. He had a great time on the show. We I'm so excited him. for that movie. I'm I'm prepared for it to be a flop. Pop really the corn or bargain bin? What do we think? I love Luke Besson, but I'm going to say pop the corn. Yes. Oh. Yes. All right. He's, wait, pop the corn's the good one. We want. Yeah. That's the good or, one. Or are you saying bargain? Are bin? you? Or do you mean to say bargain bin? No, uh, sorry. It, it's it definitely pop the corn. I'll I'll, I'll go with it. I'll yes. go see it, like any uh, Luke Besson movie in the theaters. Okay, all right. Ha! This one's kind of an interesting Winning. one. July twenty eighth, Atomic Blonde, Charlie Theron playing a, a super spy in the late eighties, Berlin Wall, um, based on a graphic novel, completely based, completely snatched up as a graphic novel. Actually, um, you, you kind of. Entertainment Weekly is like gushing over this movie. They've been featuring it constantly, so there's definitely some industry buzz. They're trying over to it. drum up some kind. That's of what I'm saying. There's industry it. buzz for this movie, but most people really don't even know anything about it. Um, what do you think? We think pop in the corn on this, or we're going to toss this in the bargain bin? Pop the corn. Ah, man, this guy just loves yeah, everything. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to think this man is an optimist. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, he has no place on this show, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you're never getting invited back. <laughs> uh, August fourth, Dark Tower. <sighs> so I like when he hesitates, though. See, that's good. That's good. There's, I'm there's... very uh, pessimistic about that one. All right, so we're gonna go bargain bin. 
Yeah, a bargain bin. See, he doesn't even want to say the yeah. words. He's like, no, yeah, I don't. Nah, Trust yeah. me, you can't it's get like fired. It's like he's getting electric zaps every time he says something Chris, bad. i got to be honest. You can say whatever you want. No one listens to the show. Like, <laughs> you are in complete... You're fine. Like, there is no... You know, you're higher up. So Everyone not gonna be who's like, on right now is, uh, is asking if they're called no one. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, Keep right. going. Oh, is that the Facebook? Okay. Well, <laughs> the internet. Uh, we're going to skip over Death Note because I don't even know. That's like a Japanese manga series. September 1st. This is an interesting one. And then we'll follow it up with one that's not necessarily a, uh, a mm. summer movie, but we're going to give it a summer movie status. Um, Inhumans, the first two episodes of this planned eight episode series is going to debut in IMAX theaters so technically it is a summer movie yeah. September is still the September summer September will still be warm it's still it's warm September. it's technically still a summer movie what do you think about the Inhuman series coming out um bargain bin probably yeah oh yeah just Whoa. not even not even are, are we even hearing anything good about that movie just just really quickly or, or, or that show. series in, in general um hmm you Left me speechless. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. All right, real quick, we got thirty seconds. We're gonna go Kingsman, the Golden Circle. It technically comes out September twenty second, but it's a new date, so they got. I, I think it got pushed down wow. to September. They so. got that sequel out fast, though. I, I feel like they did. Yeah, Kingsman was actually a good movie, though. I loved it. Kingsman I was pretty it. good. Kingsman, Golden Circle. Are we popping the corn or going bargain bin? Very different from the comics, but popcorn. All right. Chris, tell the audience out there where they can read your stuff. I know you you are one of the big guys, the big guns in Newsarama. You're all over that site, but um, you know, at, tell the audience where they can find you and read more of your articles. I'm at uh, newsarama.com, writing about comics, movies, movies based on comics, sometimes comics based on movies at, uh, again, it's www.newsarama.com. And where can they find you on Twitter? It is uh, my uh, newsarama is at uh, newsarama, and then I am uh, personally at at Chris Aaron A R R A N T. And I've been pronouncing it around the entire time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We talked about that. Three for ten, yeah. Hall of Fame. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for joining. When we come back, we are going to go spinning the racks. We've got some uh, Alien Day. We've got uh, some Star Wars news. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about New Mutants. And we're going to actually do an Easter story because we forgot to get it in last week or we just didn't have time. When we oh, come we back. care. When it no, it's really good, actually. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. TalkingAlternative.com You ever seen like the old men at the Starbucks? Like they have their little like. I don't go to Starbucks. Oh, I do. I'm, I work. You know, I'm Starbucks. a man. It's fantastic. And uh, <laughs> they just have these old men club, and they just sit around and talk about the good old days. That's why I don't go into Starbucks. <laughs> it's a creepy sausage fest <laughs> on on caffeine. Secrets of the sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. I want to thank Chris Arendt. I like Arant much better. I'm going to rename him. <laughs> like that's it. You know, there was there was a time too. We go on vacation and like friends would bring like girlfriends and stuff, and they would be like, "My name is Don." I'd be like, "No, you're Beth," <laughs> and just call him that the rest that, of the, the rest that, of the day. And it would catch and on. That worked. It actually worked. caught on. It start. Yeah, I don't know. I have this this mm. power to, to yeah, rename. It, it must be a power because I don't see a lot of normal people getting away with that. <laughs> this is very true. Actually, <laughs> I, I am anything but normal. 
So are all of our listeners and all of us because that's what we we right. gravitate towards. We this thrive stuff. on the weird. Yeah, <laughs> and then, see, how, the see how I roped everyone in there. Yeah, you did into yeah. my deficiency done. Yeah. after you discredited them last time <laughs> by saying they don't exist. So Hassan and I actually do listen to the shows afterwards, and uh, you know we we tend to We're to give ourselves for well, we tend to give ourselves like critiques and criticisms. And Hassan's always like, "Don't call out how bad we're doing on the show." <laughs> On the show, and I'm like, no, no, because then it negates how bad we're doing if I call it out. So, yeah, but then also people are like, you know what? Yeah, you guys do. Suck. <laughs> this is terrible. Click. <laughs> why am I? Why am I listening? Yeah, Click. I don't know exactly. Yeah. If these guys know they suck, then <laughs> then All what, right. what? So I want to thank Dan Jones <laughs> for uh, from Newsarama for calling in. He did a great job. Now go to at Chris uh, Chris Arendt on uh, Twitter. Go check him out. He actually right. he writes. I think it is that yeah, last I, time. I was just saying, get his three name out of ten. Right. That's all sure, I needed, just baby. Make sure you get his I'm name three right. for nine right now. <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm not even just Hall of Fame. Like I am like ex- exceptional Hall of Fame right now. If I go for four you, for ten, the Dolce I'm Ted right? Williams. Okay, this is fantastic. <laughs> um, today is Alien Day. Yes, it is. And it kicks off our segment. We do this every week. It's called Spinning the Racks. Spin the Rack. Spin the Rack. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get this right at some point. <laughs> we, don't, we don't ever have to do that again. <laughs> it's really good, though. <laughs> I mean, it really was. Who was that? Who was that fool you got to sing? Oh, well, that poor sap. I don't know, but who was the fool that actually put the reverb on it? See, that was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. All right. We're, oh, my God. If there was any semblance of a professional show, yeah, it's that over pretty now. much, it's that gone pretty much now. takes that away. Yeah. <laughs> Our caller is like, wow, I just destroyed myself. <laughs> <laughs> My brand is actually lowered from being on this show. <laughs> That's what we tend to do. We yeah. tend to bring people down. <laughs> hey, coming up in the next couple of weeks, though, before we go spin on the racks, though, we're going to have uh, Kristen Anapau. I'm going to make sure I get that name right. She's uh, actress on True Blood. She's going to be on here later in May. We're trying to get a secret surprise guest next week, but uh, also Joan Pelzer. So surprised that we so, don't even know who it is. What did Joan end up renaming her show to, though? We still, it's just, still it's still, she still doesn't know what her show is going to be, but she's a fellow host. I think she should be called Friend Me. That that was my that was my hat in the ring. <laughs> Friend me with Joan. And that Pelton. is now what it is. We but just branded she's a, it. Uh, yeah, she's a <laughs> uh, a wonderful wonderful uh, host on TalkRadio.nyc. So she'll be joining us in studio next week, and she's going to bring a super surprise guest for us. It's going to be very exciting. We got a lot of we got a lot of cool things. We got Everclear's Art Alexis going to join us in June when he's in town for Irving Plaza show. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, and that's we're trying. Awesome. I'm telling you, I'm trying for actually. Switchfoot or Lifehouse, one of those two bands. I'm going to get the lead singer from that, uh-huh, all right. or or a guy from that. I don't know. If it's gonna some, be some like, or a fan, one of those two. <laughs> so just get a fan to talk to. Look, us. we are just consistently <laughs> working on this thing. All right, yeah, today is Alien Day. It's 426, which yes. is the planet LV 426. Uh, there you go. So the, they're they're calling it hashtag Alien Day on Twitter. Ripping off Star Wars. That's oh, all. those folks. Those Cinco folk, de Mayo. Those clever hashtag. I wonder who like creates the hashtags. I mean, Bored like, people. Yeah, but how does it catch on? It's like the same. Thing. Like, they, it, they put it out there and say, hey, trend this. It's and then, really and then they're, amazing. Really and then amazing. They're, uh, they're minions. What's your best alien memory? Like, what is your like quintessential alien memory? Quintessential alien memory. I don't know. It's it's two. There, there are two of them. One of them is watching the original on my sofa okay. when I was a kid. And Aliens was coming on that night on HBO. That's when people only had H1, yeah. basically uh, one provider um, or, or platform. And I had to take a nap during the day. So that I could be awake in the evening. That's okay. how young I was. So that I could watch Aliens and scare the crap out of myself and not want to sleep ever again. Yeah. And I did that. And then in 86, right? That's when the that's when the Karen one came out. Yeah. Uh, that's a, Just sitting in the theater and watching that is a great movie. Because I knew nothing about it. It kind of just came out of nowhere. Uh, because I, wasn't, I didn't have my ear to the ground mm-hmm. at that time. I was still young. And uh, it was a fantastic film. And it wasn't as scary... As the original, it wasn't a thriller. It was like a war movie, right? So that was a that's a fantastic experience. And and then there were the sequels. <laughs> so we won't want to my, really talk about that. My so. uh, alien memory. <laughs> what is, is yours? Spaceballs, nineteen eighty six. That's my <laughs> favorite. And it was alien John movie. Hurt again. So. So it, oh, it, no. it almost works. <laughs> not again. Gotta love, gotta love That's that. That's technically not an alien experience. <laughs> That's as much an alien as I'll get into. Because he had the my... fish, and they asked for the check after that. In the odd news category, and we didn't get to do this last week because we were having this heated debate, family wakes up on Easter to find Fox stole all their hidden eggs. 
A Virginia family who Fox awoke News to find, stole no. their eggs from them? <laughs> yeah. A Virginia family awoke to find the Easter eggs hidden in their yard had been taken. They actually had security camera footage and identified the thief as a fox. The joke's on the fox, though, if they were chocolate eggs. Was it Bill eggs, O'Reilly? Did Bill O'Reilly steal the eggs? <laughs> well, is, is that he, why he was he's fired? He's doing a podcast now. <laughs> so yeah. he's, you know, he's doing his... He's, he's on our caliber now. Two foxes on her farm. Oh, really? Well, yeah, well, but that makes sense. Oh, well, that's, oh, see, that's, that's more of a good. fox thing to do. So, the, it's a f- so this is a fox kind of incursion, then, yes, right? Yes. The fox, the rising of the foxes. The, uh, the fox no. awakens? No. It's no? Oh, for one. <laughs> Those jokes are funny. They're just vintage. It takes its time. When you're going home, you'll be like, we, hey, we Fox Awakens, show, that's we, funny. Well, actually, The Fox Awakens is not the bad. The Fox Awakens, thank that's, you. That's not bad. Thank you. Winning. I, I can, I can, Hashtag I can winning Godwin, that. thank you. It, it, it's like one of those cult movies that you know kind of go, go along. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joss Whedon actually called up Marvel before he accepted the Batgirl role, which still is not officially announced. He actually called for permission. And Kevin Feige was like, thanks, dude. That was really nice. He too. called permission to do what? I'm sorry. He actually called up uh, Kevin Feige from Marvel Studios and told him that there is interest in him doing a Batgirl movie and if they were okay with him jumping, you know, changing ships oh, really? from Marvel to DC. And they said, sure, Josh. Kevin Feige was like, he didn't need to do that. Yeah. That, that just shows you how good of a guy Josh We're not going to do anything else with you anymore because uh, you, you badmouthed us a little bit uh, when the second Avengers movie came out. Mm. So you may go. It's mm. <laughs> kind of what they said. Is that what they said? Seems like it would be how that conversation would have went. Yeah. Yeah. Could yeah. be. Could he kinda, be. He kind of sour, he sour mouthed them when, uh, when the Avengers came out, didn't he? No. Yeah, he was like, well, they wanted, uh, the, especially the sequence at the, at the, at, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Hawkeye's oh, man. house. Now you got it. I passed yeah. it on to you. Yeah, but I got it. I, 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 I rebounded. Worst show ever. Hawkeye. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> See Called it out. Look at the numbers just falling. We went from three to negative three now. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to catch the replays of the show, though, go on iTunes.com, type in Secrets of the Sire, download, subscribe to. Um, we definitely love it if you review the show. Review it positively, though, please, because our self-esteem can't take any negative reviews. Um, if they're his can't, I it, can. if the reviews are no, 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 no compliment that's... sandwiches all around. Yeah, well, that that we can definitely do. <laughs> um, Disney schedules release dates for Star Wars films and Frozen Two, which we won't. Well, we can talk about Frozen Two also, but studio preps for Han Solo movie Episode Nine, along with the live action Lion King and a new Indiana Jones. That was what I kind of took of this. Um, Disney and Lucasfilm will release Star Wars Episode Nine May twenty fourth, twenty nineteen. Why did they get bumped to May though? Like, why is it getting bumped to like May? Star Wars now is now synonymous with. December, cold, Only for two movies. Star Wars in its entire uh, run is a May movie. Is that back in the 70s? 1977, May 25th. Yeah, I wasn't around then. Doesn't matter. (laughs) Empire Strikes Back came out in May. Return of the Jedi came out in May 25th. I feel like Empire Strikes Back would be a December movie, though. And then the three prequels came out in May. It's always been May. But they re-released the old movies before the prequels came out. In December, yeah. Yeah, but Good. but Boom. the new movies, Star Boom. Wars in general, has always been, their release dates have always been in May. Yeah. Well, so there's nothing. All right, so maybe they're actually there's no there reverting there. tradition. <laughs> now, one of the things that they it said, It means though, that we're not going to have to wait two years to see the sequel to uh, to The Last Jedi. That's what that means. That's a positive. Yeah, it's a year and a half. Yeah. That's a fast turnaround. Yeah. Especially since they're rewriting the well, entire movie. Well, supposedly they're now. they're already filming some of it. They've well, they have to refilm. They they have to rewrite. Yes. They had to rewrite everything with uh, with Princess Leia yes. now. Yes, yes, they did. And she's just going to disappear. That's the inside scoop on that too. She's not. They're not digitally enhancing her. They're well, just that's... kind of writing her character away somehow. Uh, that's a. I mean, you know, you, at the end of the that's day, that's what you. That's what you get when you try to cash in on the nostalgia thing, and then these actors, you know, have the nerve to die. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, you. I think there's got to be a, a semblance of you know, leeway. I think when it comes to writing her character out, right? Like, I don't think they're gonna. I, I don't think fans. Well, all right, hang on. Let me let me rephrase that because mm. we do know fans, but I, I don't think fans can really get on their case for. Oh, having go, to do that, yeah, they right? Can. They can. What could you see? What could you see as the as the complaints for them having oh, to, they to rewrite? Say they, they, you know, they they disgrace her memory. They disgrace the character. The character. Like, wouldn't you, you disgrace know? the character more by having a digital version of her? 
<sighs> Look. Which I, way would you go? How I would have gone was the the Force Awakens would have uh, taken no, up no, about no, 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 how no, I would have no, no. gone. Now you're no, no. I'm saying now. You asked. Given given you what asked. You, yeah, but I I'm contextualizing. I wouldn't have been in the tro- in the problem in the first place. No, that's garbage. Come on, well, that's not garbage. That's that's like that's that the what if perfect game. Sense. That's the what if game. How would I handle it? I'm saying what if you are in charge of Star Wars Episode Nine after Force Awakens has already come out. Episode Eight is now already in the can. Uh, and you have big plans for Leia, would you have gone the digital route? Were you, are you going to rewrite it? Is she going to be like, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I would have a space cruiser in the very beginning of the film explode and have <sighs> everybody reacting to the fact that she was on it and that she died. And I would have made such a big deal of, of it Ooh. that everybody would uh, accept that she has been dead and that it's taken seriously instead of having it be like kind of a passing thing. And people like, well, we didn't see her body, so obviously she's probably still alive somewhere. The way they do with Boba Fett and Mace Windu and, and, and half a billion other characters who we don't actually see die. It's going to be very tough. Sure, I, 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 that's that's a bold route. Uh, I'm going to throw that out to the audience. How would you handle Princess Leia's death in the next in the in Episode Nine? I wouldn't have put her in any of them in the first place. And, that's and uh, we are going to go to our poll real quick. You know, we had a poll this this whole time, which I, I did a, a very wonderful job of highlighting. Yeah, was someone dancing on that poll. Uh, because, um, what summer comic book movie are you most looking forward to? Guardians, Wonder Woman, and Spider Man all tied. All tied. Uh, that thirty three percent each. Which means there's a 1% margin for error <laughs> somewhere, yes, somewhere exactly. in there. I don't think... That's what I'm saying. People are, people are happy that they're getting more of this stuff. This is much better than last year, too. Last, last summer felt like there was nothing. I don't nothing. even remember last summer. That's exactly, what, that's exactly it, though. There, is no, there was no summer movies last, last year. Last summer, there was no movies because all the celebrities were dying. All right. Guardians 2, Pop the Corn, Pop the Bargain corn. Bin. Wonder Woman. Pop the Corn. Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, uh, bin. Bargain bin, right? Bargain bin. I'm gonna go. Pop the, I'm gonna go. Pop the corn for Guardians two. I'm gonna go bargain bin for Wonder Woman. I just don't think DC's gonna do it. And I think I'm gonna go pop the corn for Spider Man. I think that it's gonna. I think it's gonna pleasantly remind us. I'm sure we it will character. do well. I don't know. I, will I like it? Probably not. If you like what we do, go to our. Uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Catch us here every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc as well. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Michael underscore Dolce, uh, at HS Godwin on Twitter, so you can harass him on Twitter. Instagram, we're mm-hmm. mdolce64. We're on SoundCloud slash Secrets of the Sire. We're on Spreaker slash Secrets of the Sire. YouTube slash Secrets of the Sire. I'm just, I'm just blurring and slurring my way through this as quickly as humanly possible. Next week... The reviews are in. Guardians 2 kicks off the summer movie madness, but will it live up to the hype? We're going to have Joan Pelzer in studio as well, too, and she's going to bring on a superior uh, surprise mystery guest. <laughs> Spin Secrets of the Sire. Stay tuned for It Came From The Radio. Boom. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And And welcome welcome to to 21st Century Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. For you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business. And your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at TalkingAlternative.com. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. 
Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. 